So what do we usually do? We associate declining milk production associated with higher temperature and humidity as the animal ability to cope with heat stress. And therefore, we, we, we usually look at bulls in which daughters produce more milk under heat stress, or, or, or to phrase it better, bulls in which daughters uh, um, lose less milk when it's hot. And we usually say those bulls are the good ones. And this type of ev evaluation is already very complicated, but uh, uh, we are making lots of progress in the direction of implementing a national program. Welcome to the Dairy Health Black Belt podcast, uh, brought to you by Wisetetics. I'm Dr. Luciano Cacheta from the University of Minnesota, uh, and I'm presenting today this podcast, with, and we are dedicated to bring to you the latest insight in the dairy uh, industry, in the dairy science, have discussions uh, that are very relevant to the field, and bringing the latest information that we have. And today we have the pleasure, I have the pleasure to have a conversation with Dr. Prago Meni, uh, who is a, a professor at the University of Connecticut and has an interest and have been working a lot in the area of genetics and genetic selection. Thank you for uh, joining us in the podcast today, Breno. Thank you for having me. It's my pleasure to be here too. Yeah, so Breno, I, I had the 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 beforehand I could see your CV, but can you give a brief brief introduction to the to the uh, people listening of uh, who you are, where you're coming from, and how we got you where you are? I'm originally from Brazil. I have a degree in veterinary medicine, even though I never practiced. Uh, um, from the Federal University of Bahia, my home state, um, I have a master's in animal breeding and genetics from Federal University of Minas Gerais, also in Brazil. And I did my PhD and postdoc at the University of Georgia uh, under Dr. Ignacy Mistal. Um, and when I finished my postdoc, I came here to Connecticut as an assistant professor in animal genomics. And I'm here since 2018. I got recently promoted to associate professor. Congratulations. Thank you. My research focuses in genetic and genomic, genomic evaluations of different species. I have a special focus in dairy cattle. And in dairy cattle, we, we work mostly with uh, genetic and genomic evaluations of genotype by environment interactions, specifically uh, heat stress. Why Genetics turns podcast airtime into brand authority. We don't sell ads, we elevate voices. Curious how far your voice can go to become a reference in the industry and attract more leads? Scan the QR code and discover how we can turn your expertise into unmatched brand authority. Let's transform expertise into influence, starting now. Okay, well, that's that's very relative. Like, even though, like, we're coming off the summer, right? So, like, we all, like, hit stress, something that's very in the mind of everyone. I'm in Minnesota. People think that we don't have heat stress here, but there's heat stress even here in Minnesota. So in other places, you definitely will see that. But it's very interesting that you say, and genomics and the genetics is something that we have been making a lot of progress in the dairy industry. So uh, you you said that you have this emphasis. You're looking into this genetic evaluation and the making genetic progress with taking into consideration the heat stress of the cow. So. Uh, can you just give us an idea of like, how does that look? Uh, is it different now? What are you doing from what was traditionally uh, looked at in the same field uh, for this genetics and heat stress? So I think the biggest challenge in this type of evaluation is that we don't have a phenotype. So it's easy for us, not easy, but it's possible for us to calculate uh, uh, breeding values or PTAs for traits that we measure, like milk production or components, even health, fertility. Uh, some of them are trickier than others. But for heat stress, we do not have a phenotype that we can measure for every animal. That we can just go to the farm and measure. You mean like pull a blood sample and like... Exactly. Measure it. We don't have like a biomarker or even sensor data. 
We do okay. have some of those indicators, but they are usually expensive to measure or, or they're just hard to do or they vary too much. And farmers are not going to collect that normally unless they have some benefits to it. So just feeding the national evaluation doesn't seem to be enough for most farmers across the country. Um, so what do we usually do? We associate declining milk, pr milk production associated with higher temperature and humidity as the animal ability to cope with heat stress. And therefore, we, we, we usually look at bulls in which daughters produce more milk under heat stress, or, or, or to phrase it better, bulls in which daughters uh, um, lose less milk when it's hot. And we usually say those bulls are the good ones. And this type of ev evaluation is already very complicated, but uh, uh, we are making lots of progress in the direction of implementing a national program. However, what we have seen recently, and we didn't see that in the national data yet, but we saw that in our farm here in Connecticut, was that cows that produced more milk under heat stress, they had way lower PTAs for, for fertility in general. And uh, uh, we still didn't capture that in the national data. We are not in that step. But in our farms over here, it's a small herd of about 80 animals. We are able to see that very, very clear. That's very interesting. So you say you were looking for, what well, we're looking for the genetic component, meaning like the cows that can cope like in a way, what we're looking for, the, the phenotype coping with heat stress would be the cows that don't lose as much. So they don't decrease their milk production as much. But what you say, telling me is like, if you find those cows, they are also those ones that probably have like a little lower fertility or they're harder to get pregnant after that period of heat stress. Is that is that correct? Yes. So we think that this cow is paying a price for keeping milk production higher when, when it's hot. They usually start eating less food. So eventually they got to take this energy from somewhere and they probably pay that price in, in trying to get pregnant at the end of that, of that cycle, right? Another problem with heat stress in, in those evaluations is that some animals, they have a hard time getting pregnant over the summer. So we can only, they can only conceive in the fall. And then they're going to peak in their lactation in the peak of the summer. When they should be getting bred again. Exactly. Right? And, then, and then we start seeing that the animals that are the more heat stressed, we tend to expose them a little bit more to heat stress, uh, uh, just because that's how, how we, we, we try to inseminate them. So there is a big confounding effect between when this animal is being inseminated and, and not be, and being challenged by high temperatures for reproductive traits. It's almost like a vicious cycle, right? Exactly. Like you, you can never get out of this, this wheel because you in the summer, you're having a hard time getting pregnant, then you get pregnant at a time that you put you to be producing a lot of milk again next summer. And then she's at that. Eventually, maybe she'll fall off the, the wheel and leave the herd and not like progress as in, a herd, in the herd. Yeah, right? especially in a small herd like ours, we do not have the number to see a lot of variation because, well, um, we have 80 cows, so we are... Uh, when you look at specific breeds, we have fewer Holsteins uh, uh, than 80 because we have some jerseys too. So what we're trying to do is now to find that same pattern in national data in which hopefully you're going to have enough animals being challenged by its stress all over the year. Uh, uh, and we can, we can uh, uh, validate those patterns that you're finding. How do you plan on doing that? Like, and again, this might be something that you're currently working with. Like, it's okay if you cannot share too much, but like, what, what's your expectation on? We currently have access to the national data. Uh, for now, we are working mostly with production traits. Um, milk, fat, protein, and somatic cell count. And you're trying to derive a model for that using uh, um, 
and, and the national data is huge. We have animals collect, we have phenotypes collected from 1970s in pretty much every animal that went to to do any sort of testing. So we are trying to find an efficient way to run those evaluations. Uh, um, we are also dividing that into different states so that we can have an evaluation of bulls based on the ability of their daughters to produce milk under heat stress. Once we have that, we're going to start correlating with the current evaluations that are published by, by the CDCB, the Council on Dairy Cattle Breeding, and, and we will start seeing if we can correlate our findings with the current uh, uh, published PTAs. And that's probably going to give us the next steps of our research. Okay. And, uh, and just briefly, what do you think would be the next steps or how would that translate into uh, some applications uh, for the people on the field? So our idea now is to collect better phenotypes. So because of genomic selection, we don't need to collect phenotypes on millions of animals anymore. We can decrease that number a little bit more and perhaps we can collect better phenotypes. And the idea is that with their regular evaluation when a farmer is buying their semen, they're going to also have a value on heat tolerance for those bulls. Now, we're going to be very careful that we don't tell farmers that this bull is very heat tolerant and they're going to think it's a great idea to select this bull, but we're also telling that this bull is a bad bull for, for, for fertility and then we spread that, that bad genetics within a farm. So, so I don't think we are yet in the step of implementing such evaluations just just because I'm concerned about providing bad PTAs for, for, for fertility associated with good PTAs for, for, for milk production under heat stress. Very interesting. It sounds like the, the, the capture or the definition of this phenotype that will be a more appropriate and more, also more complex phenotype, right? To determine that's something that's key to leading you and this field on to, onto the next step. Yeah, so that's our idea, and hopefully we can identify a bull that's going to produce the daughters are going to produce more milk, but also going to present good fertility when it's hot. So, so that's our goal, but I think we still need to 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 run more analysis before we come up with a with a ready application for 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 sire selection. Something that will be a win win and not so like you're gaining one side and, but losing the next and then or at the end it doesn't compromise perfect yes it, it's they go almost like a negotiation right like you yeah. you and the word that like you i like using it's you're optimizing it like because you can maximize one and they're gonna minimize or diminish another one but if you optimize both you probably have the best of both uh, both approaches. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, very, very, very interesting. Thank you for sharing your time. We're coming up on the time, otherwise it will make it very long. Uh, thank you for participating. Lots of good information and lots more to talk, and we could potentially uh, uh, get bring you back on another time to get more updates on this. I'll be happy to be back. Thank you, Dr. Fragomeni. Fragomeni. Uh, this this concludes our episode of the Dairy. Dairy Health Black Belt podcast that's presented by Wise Genetics. Thank you for joining us. Don't forget to subscribe to our podcast to stay updated on what's the future episodes and what's the next topics. If you have any questions and if you have any suggestions, please get in touch with us. We'll be able to we'll try to put together something that's uh, always uh, addressing all your concerns and all your questions. Uh, I'm Luciano Cacheta. I'm signing off. And this is the Dairy Health Black Belt Podcast. Thank you.